boy oh boy do I have a lengthy and hopefully interesting video for you guys today. As promised in the ESP video I have for you the LTD version of the ESP Iron Cross. And I got it for a comparison video but first let me explain what this is. It is the budget version even though it's not cheap it's cheaper than the ESP. The 2014 LTD Iron Cross. The ESP version is made in the Kiso Japanese custom shop. This one was made in Korea using affordable materials. You still have mahogany body and maple top, 3 piece mahogany neck, ebony fingerboard, LTD locking tuners that were made in China and Tom Pro locking bridge and tailpiece. Same control scheme as the ESP, it has the Iron Cross, it has the black stripe, it has the three-way switches and it features the EMG James Hetfield set, same as the ESP. At this point you're probably wondering, but those are the same guitars. Trust me, they're not. The ESP is way different than the LTD. In this video, I will try to explain all of the differences, which one should you buy. I will try to justify paying five times more for the ESP or I'll tell you why should you go with the LTD. To make this a fair comparison video, I've set up both of those guitars in E flat standard using the new set of 1150 Ernie Ball Papa Head Hardware Master Core strings. First things first, I will disassemble the LTD, show you the differences with the ESP, and then I'm gonna compare both guitars side by side by playing a demo. What's interesting is that this time I had a couple of incidental blind tests. I had a couple of friends walk into the store and I gave them both guitars to try. After the blind tests, I have a guitar tech that is a good friend of mine and also happens to be a great guitar player who tried both of those and gave me his thoughts about the ESP vs LTD. Eventually we'll get to the review of Uncle Muti Gibson Les Paul Custom Iron Cross over there. <laughs> there is a couple of videos that I recommend you check out before continuing with this one. First of all, you check out the ESP Iron Cross video review because it's gonna be essential to comparing the LTD. Then there's the ESP vs LTD snakebite video which is essential to understanding why you should get the LTD over the ESP. Long story short, I have 4 viewpoints. First the beginner, why should a beginner get the LTD or the ESP. Then you have the bedroom warrior, intermediate musician. The gigging musician who plays live shows. And last but not least, the investor or collector. The viewpoint of those four types of buyers is explained in my ESP vs LTD snakebite video so be sure to check it out so we don't lose much more time in this video and we go on with the LTD vs ESP Iron Cross. I'm extremely happy to finally have those two in the same room and to be able to tell you the difference. For those of you that don't have one hour to watch a guitar video, here's the two minute version. Starting with the origin, the ESP is made in house OEM in the Japanese Kiso custom shop using the best materials possible. The LTD is outsourced to Korea made in the World Musical Instrument Factory, meaning that it's not made by ESP employees. Differences, obviously the ESP and LTD logo. Spurzel locking tuners versus LTD locking tuners. We have a wider truss rod cavity and a wider cap compared to the LTD in order to accommodate for the one-way Gibson style of truss rod versus the two-way slim profile truss rod adjustable by a 4mm Allen wrench. The ESP uses a bone nut, the LTD has a molded one. The highest grade possible ebony fingerboard versus ebony in the early versions but later it has been replaced by Makassar ebony. 12 inch radius of the fingerboard versus 14 inches in the LTD. Then we have a real mother of pearl inlays versus Avalon. The ESP has a solid one piece mahogany neck, the LTD has a three piece mahogany neck. The body of the ESP is bound by a three ply binding at the top and two ply at the back. The LTD features a three ply binding all around. The ESP features those shallow style of strap buttons and also includes a strap lock. The LTD has the standard strap buttons, no lock included. Another small difference, but a difference nonetheless, the ESP has a 4-ply pickguard, the LTD has a 3-ply pickguard. The next one is big though and Gibson knows what I'm talking about. The ESP has the raised pots, the LTD, you can see they're almost down to the body. The next one shows attention to detail. The iron cross is bolted to the body of the ESP using metal inserts. In the LTD it is screwed directly into the wood. The back of the ESP features a metal tray for the 9 volt battery. The LTD has a simple cavity with a plastic cover. The ESP is 5 times more expensive and 1 pound heavier than the LTD. If you wanna find out why, stick around for the next section of the video. Here's a quick written recap of the differences. 
For those of you who just wanted to see the differences listed, I hope this helps and thank you guys for watching. For the rest of you, let's go further in depth. In order to truly understand the differences between the LTD and ESP Iron Cross, we have to discuss where they are made. The Iron Cross was introduced as a model in 2014, you can check out my ESP Iron Cross video for more details on that. It is made in the Kiso Japan factory which is considered to be the custom shop. There is an amazing 2015 video tour of the Japanese factory that I strongly suggest you check out. The factory consists of 50 workers, all of them had to go to a two-year school program to get this job. In order to work in the custom shop of ESP, you had to be an employee for at least 10 years in the factory. Only four employees work in the custom shop. After seeing some of the amazing guitars that come out of the custom shop, I'm starting to think that the Iron Cross is a child's play for them. You can imagine that a small group of highly skilled workers using the best materials putting long hours into single instrument is not gonna be cheap. On the other hand, we have the LTD, the production of which is outsourced in Korea. Here is the definition of outsourcing. It is primarily a cost-cutting measure where tasks done in-house are now being completed by individuals or businesses outside of the firm and not affiliated with it. ESP are outsourcing the LTD brand to the World Musical Instrument Factory in Incheon, Korea. There is a great 2014 video of the Incheon factory by Rob Chapman. You can even see some of the first iron crosses in the fretwork stage of production. The same factory produces some of the famous brands such as Schecter, Dean, Agile and Chapman guitars. This explains the huge price gap between the ESP and the LTD. On one hand, you have the Japanese custom shop consisting of highly trained workers crafting the Iron Cross with no compromise. On the other hand, you have an outsourced manufacturing trying to replicate the same guitar for 5 times cheaper. A lot of people, including me 10 years ago, seem to think that you just throw a piece of wood into a CNC machine, you press a button and a guitar comes out. There is so much more to it, it's mind blowing, just watch some of the factory tours that I referenced. First you gotta supply and select the proper materials. The LTD is made out of mahogany, maple and ebony, replaced by Makassar ebony in later models. There are different grades of wood material depending on the class of instrument that you want to achieve. Then there's the CNC routing process which stands for Computer Numerical Control. The short version of it, it is a machine that uses a 3D drawing as a map to move the cutting tools or CNC routers through a pre-made pad getting consistent results in mass production. That's the tricky part, mass producing instruments without losing quality. Even though that it's already outsourced, meaning that it's cheaper than the ESP, there are levels of quality that can be achieved in the World Musical Instrument Factory. CNC machining still requires highly skilled workers and they cannot afford to lose time on every guitar. Remember, this is mass production, it's not for person operation like in Japan. I hope you're starting to understand how did LTD make the Iron Cross almost 5 times cheaper than the ESP version. First of all, they are outsourcing to Korea using cheaper labor that is not so highly skilled. The Korean workers still have experience and are well trained, but remember, we are comparing them to the Japanese custom shop. Then we have cheaper materials which is even more evident in later models that are using Makassar Ebony. Then there's the manual labor after the CNC. I'm sure that the Korean factory cannot afford to do a 1 hour fret job or 2 hours of finish buffing. But they still manage to do a hell of a job. The LTD Iron Cross is one of the best LTD eclipses that I have ever tried. I've owned two of them before buying the ESP and this one is the first that I ever got back in 2015. Now it belongs to a friend of mine who is in a Metallica tribute band. Be sure to check him out, he has a lot of Metallica covers and live performance content. I want you guys to keep something in mind though, today I'm not comparing a bad guitar to a good guitar, I'm comparing a great guitar to a perfect masterpiece. I've already shown you what a masterpiece looks like by disassembling the ESP Iron Cross in my video review. Now I'm gonna do the same with the LTD and compare the differences between the two guitars. You gotta keep an open mind though, 5 times more expensive does not equal 5 times better in guitar manufacturing. Before I move on with the review, I gotta take real good care of this baby. It needs a lot of love and polish, I'm gonna polish the bridge, 
I'm gonna polish those frets because they look real dirty. I will clean and oil the fingerboard. I'm also gonna try to remove the rust from those pickup frame screws. I wanna make this thing as shiny and presentable as possible before I show it to you guys. Be extra careful when cleaning around the LTD logo. Usually what I do is I press down with my finger and then I clean around it extremely careful because if you catch one of the corners you might lift it up and break one of the letters off. I got this beauty as fresh as possible. I polished the frets with Music Nomad Frine. In some cases they are so dirty that I even use the Music Nomad guitar polish. After cleaning the beautiful ebony fingerboard, it was time to condition it. I usually use the F1 Music Nomad oil. I also used some guitar polish on the pickups, the bridge and those pickup ring screws. They don't look brand new but at least they're not rusty anymore. The whole guitar cleaned up nicely. Before I continue I'm gonna give you a look at the original listing for the LTD Iron Cross in the website for ESP. Check out the specs, take your time. James will wait, no rush, don't worry he's not judging you for reading too slow. Allow me to go through the specs once again. You got mahogany body, maple top, set neck construction 3 piece mahogany neck, ebony fingerboard with 22 extra jumbo frets. Those had been filed down a little bit so don't take them as an example. 24.75 inch scale length, 14 inch radius and abalone inlays. It features a molded nut and LTD locking tuners. Those locking tuners work hand in hand with the Tone Pro locking bridge and tailpiece. You can't have an Iron Cross without the EMG Signature James Hetfield set. The factory setup is neck volume, bridge volume, a tone, three-way switch and on this guitar, this one is the working three position switch. Time to see what kind of job the Incheon factory has done on the cavities. Now pay attention guys because a lot of people claim that those guitars are the same just have the different logos. Places like these, the cavities, the way they have been routed, the smallest attention to detail show the differences between the ESP Iron Cross and the Korean made LTD. If you haven't watched my 2014 ESP Iron Cross video review as I suggested, I'm gonna bring on screen the cavities of the Japanese Kiso custom made guitar. It was absolutely flawless. Now that I have seen the Kiso factory tour and the requirements for someone to work in the custom shop, I fully understand why. You can clearly see the Japanese obsession with perfection. There's not a single chip on it. There's not a crooked angle. There's, it's absolutely flawless. I was truly mind blown by some of the guitars that the ESP Custom Shop produces for exhibition at the NAMM shows. And I really think that the Iron Cross is just a child's play for them. Look at it. Just look at it. And now have a look at the LTD. I honestly expected a little better from the highest grade LTD. In here we have the quick connect jack for the pickup and we have the black ground wire for the three-way switch. The owner connected it to be the working three-way switch. Underneath the quick connect cables we have a small channel that is aligned for the cable to sit down and not to be pressed by the pickup. I mean I kind of get why is it here but did it have to be made by an axe murderer? Now look at it in the light. Whoever you are, Korean worker, why did you have to route all the way into the neck tenon? Every single corner of this cavity shows that someone was in a hurry to make it. Do you see the shielding paint and the way that it has been spread unevenly? And honestly, I've been a bit surprised because I've seen better job done in the Korean factory on cheaper guitars. Keep in mind that this is the highest possible grade of LTD. This is the EC1000 equivalent made to look like an Iron Cross. The bridge cavity, more of the same. Let's call it sufficient. Those cavities are sufficient. But sufficient does not equal perfect, does it? You've seen the ESP, now I'm showing you the LTD. Tell me, are those the same guitars? I'm pretty sure that the cost and time cutting didn't end with the cavities as well. I mean, look at the routing for the cables of the pickups. It's just chiseled. They CNC'd the body and then chiseled away the rest of it. It looks like somebody gave me a sharp instrument and said George make some way for the cables. I'm honestly surprised because even though this is the first year for the Iron Cross 2014 I think the Korean factory has done LTDs before. Maybe the newer models are better you would say. Speaking of them look at the 2021 model. It's no longer made in Korea it's made in Indonesia. 
I've seen some guitars coming out of that factory, the EC1000 Fluence and the Hammer that I reviewed. Unfortunately, I cannot say that the routing and paint job of the Indonesian made EC1000 was much of an improvement. The Hammer's quality was about the same, which is surprising because it's 3 times cheaper. After reviewing both of those guitars, I have little hope left that the Indonesian made Iron Cross would be better. Both the LTD and ESP Iron Cross were made back in 2014. They both feature the EMG James Hetfield signature set and I am expecting it to be made around 2014, June 2014 EMG James Hetfield neck. Would there be any surprises in the bridge or we will have a similar date? Sure enough, 2014 June EMG James Hetfield bridge made in USA, making this a set and I've polished it pretty well with the guitar polish by Music Nomad. This is what the headset looks like with the quick connect system in place. And another quick look at the cavities before I close them up. Pay attention to the screw routing. This is one of the only places that you are able to see the maple cap on top of the mahogany. It's a lighter in color loot compared to it. I'll show you the darker mahogany in the back later. Speaking of the maple top, it is curved and the pickup rings are curved and slanted in order to accommodate for it. Long screws for the bridge short screws for the neck. I am pleased. I always recommend that you keep the locking bridge and tailpiece locked in place but for the demonstration I've unlocked them with this 1.5mm Allen wrench. They are made by Tom Pro, Metric and I've polished this one a little bit. Here's the bolt that is holding it in place. I've polished the saddles as well. They don't look like brand new but this guitar has been played a lot. Remember it's easy to look perfect when you haven't done anything. These are the struts, they are thumb wheel and screwdriver adjustable, the bridge is metric. Now remember to unlock it when adjusting because you'll damage it otherwise. Now let's check out the tailpiece, same, made by Tone Pro. It locks through those bolts, 1.5mm Allen wrench, hasn't been top wrapped, seems to be in perfect condition. Here is something interesting, not the control scheme by itself, obviously it's volume, volume, tone and a 3 way switch. As I showed you with the routing, this is one of the places that you can tell apart the LTD from the ESP and the craftsmanship of the ESP guitar company. Since this is a curved maple top, the pot caps should be aligned to follow the curvature of the top. And if you don't make them correctly, they don't flush to the body. This one is a bit raised, this one is lower, this one is a bit slanted and lower. They are not following the curve of the top at all. Have a look at the ESP custom shop. The workers there accounted for the top being curved and they've raised the pots and drilled the top in such a way that the pot caps are following the contour of the top. That is skilled manual labor for you. Ah yes, the party piece that gives the name of the guitar. It's made out of aluminum, it's pretty light, but calling it aluminum cross would have been dull. Now I see some bubbling going on with the paint, so I was extra careful when cleaning those not to damage them or pop them or anything like that. Compared to the ESP it's black all around, the ESP had some flaking on the paint in the back. Overall they are similar. Notice those instrument marks on one end, do you see them here? Remember what I told you about the curved top? They had to fabricate the iron cross and then curve it manually by hand on this side so it accommodates for the curve of the top, flat, 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 curved on this side. I'm curious how they did this and not damage the top side of the cross because you see how rough the instrument marks are on the bottom side. The big difference between the ESP and LTD is the way that the cross is mounted to the body. On the LTD they are using wood screws, I'm assuming the holes for them were made in the pre-stage of the CNC cutting at the top. The ESP has bolts and metal inserts for those bolts underneath the cross. What's the big deal you might ask? Well, things like this show attention to detail, it's part of the hardware, it has metal inserts like the bridge and tailpiece now. I love the fact that the iron cross is curved towards this side. If you take it off, you're not gonna get it wrong put it the other way around because you have the curved side towards the curve of the maple top. I love it because it's like a little easter egg you don't see on product pictures and I'm using it to hold my pick like this. My friend prefers this position of the 3 way switch, so this is the working one. The bridge head pickup shows 16.67k ohms. We switch over to the neck, similar 16.98 and middle position 
is 8.41. He also switched the position of two of the pods because he prefers them this way. Uh, you see, this is supposed to be the bridge volume, but instead this is. You see when I'm lowering it. And this three-way switch is working. This is the pod for the neck. This means that the lower one is the tone. The neck is where most of the differences between the ESP and LTD are. Both of them feature a set neck construction and mahogany neck, but the LTD has a three-piece mahogany, ESP has a solid one-piece. It features an ebony fingerboard, but the LTD has abalone plastic and lace, the ESP has real mother of pearl. The fingerboard radius of the LTD is 14 inch, the ESP has a 12 inch radius. I wanna give you guys a closer look of the frets of both guitars, even though this one has some fret work done to it, they had been filed down to be slimmer. They are not much different than the stock ones, they are probably even better. So pay attention to the Avalon Iron Cross inlay on the 12th fret, look at the fret edges and look at the binding. Now I'm gonna show you the ESP. The first time I saw these frets back in 2017 they blew my mind. I haven't seen frets crowned like this. The mother of pearl inlays are stunning in person. Let's measure the neck of the LTD compared to the ESP. The nut is at 42mm or 1.65 inches, a slight difference here with the ESP. 12th fret is at 53mm or 2.08 inches, same as the ESP. First fret thickness is 21.2mm or 0.83 inches, similar to the ESP again. And the 12th fret thickness is 22.5mm or 0.88 inches, again similar to the ESP. The differences though are in the fretboard radius. The LTD has a 350mm 14 inch radius, the ESP has a 12 inch radius. This is the neck profile of the LTD, it's thin new and I wasn't imagining when I felt the difference with the ESP, me and a couple of guys. The LTD has a much more flatter apex here on the button you can see, especially on the 12th fret and the ESP feels more rounded like a C shape. Here are both profiles side by side, it may not look like much of a difference but you can definitely feel it when playing. The Eclipse body features a 3-ply binding at the top on both guitars and a 2-ply binding for the ESP, 3-ply for the LTD. The neck binding features black dot inlays and is the one place that if you're really nitpicky you can see small imperfections and tiny chips like this. Yeah, I know it's too small but it's still there. You're definitely not gonna notice it and it's not gonna affect playability, but it's there anyway and we're doing comparison. Now look at the ESP, it is absolutely perfect, looks like the CNC machine did it but it's all made by hand and look at the way the nut flushes to the neck. The headstock features the black LTD locking tuners and the James Hetfield signature which, which is slightly differently positioned than the ESP. Of course it features the metal LTD black logo and this is the truss rod cavity. I'm gonna show you the plastic cover for the LTD. It's considerably smaller than the ESP and it's satin black finish. The iron cross leathers are three dimensional. You see the bigger bullet on the ESP iron cross, it's black gloss. That's not purely cosmetic, there's a difference for the ESP cavity to be bigger than the LTD. You see the LTD uses a two-way slim profile truss rod that it's adjusted by a 4mm Allen wrench. The ESP on the other hand utilizes a one-way truss rod like on Gibson guitars, it has this nut. One-way means of course that it only tightens when you rotate it clockwise and you see that it needs more space on the headstock. Slightly different position of the James Hetfield signature, Spurzel locking tuners and ESP logo. Something I haven't noticed before, the pick guard of the LTD is 3-ply black, white, black, where the ESP features a 4-ply pick guard. Black, white, black, white. Small difference but it's there. Just to be nitpicky, check out how little does the pick guard stick out of the pickup ring. Now look at that in the LTD. Is it sticking out more because the pickup ring has shrunk or they just cut it like this? You tell me. Finally, I found a flow in the ESP. You see the truss rod cover in the LTD is smaller because it uses a smaller truss rod. But the ESP has the bigger one and they made it to flush to the nut but it's so big that it actually needs two screws to hold in place properly. And they only used one and it flops around like this. I know it's not a big deal but it's still a flaw and it's better in the LTD.
time to talk about the back of the LTD and I'm only gonna be discussing the routing because my friend uh, rerouted the three-way switch he tempered with the pots shifted them around in here so this is not a good example for a, for a stock guitar it's no longer the factory arrangement but this is normal for a guitar that has been used for like eight years now that's the three-way switch cavity on both guitars it has been pre-routed with the switches not working but you can connect them yourself it has a switch and a ground wire and you connect it yourself as my friend did but i've just noticed something let me compare the two yep i was not imagining things the routing in the esp is much more wider than the one in the ltd and those of you who had to solder a three-way switch in place like this knows the benefit of having a wider routing shall we compare caps as well left is the esp right is the ltd they're both shielded but you see the differences this is the 9 volt battery routing with the metal clip installed in it. I'm gonna remove it and show you what it looks like. This is the routing without the metal clip in it. This is what the metal clip looks like. You can see it in other guitars. I don't know why they decided to screw it on diagonally though. Something else caught my attention though and I can't believe this is the first time I'm noticing. The plastic cover is held in place not by screws but by bolts that have actual metal inserts into the wood. That's perfect for maintenance purposes because if you use a wood screw, the wood eventually wears out and you have to put some wood shavings in it. The bolt doesn't wear out the metal insert, so you can open and close the tray without it eventually getting loose. You see, battery compartments had to be accessed fairly regularly opposed to the electronics compartment where you have to access to exchange a pot or the output jack the battery you have to exchange more often so it's good of them to have thought out of the bolts and the metal inserts i can't believe this is the first time i thought of this uh, if you see a bolt like this that it's it has a flat tip you see it's not meant to go into wood it's meant to go into metal inserts it's a bolt not a screw basically even though they're not in the original configuration they're shifted around we still have the original emg pods and i'm surprised that we don't have the quick connect system as with the esp 2014 esp has the quick connect here they are sold their own what can i say about the routing for the electronics it is sufficient like the routing for the pickups there are some chips the paint is uneven it's not perfect but i am assuming that a lot of people don't care about that so it's good enough like everything in this guitar that's the plastic cover for the electronics compartment, inspected in the USA, the guitars are made in Korea, then shipped to US when they get inspected, shooting on the back side of it. The output jack features a chrome washer and a black oval metal plate. Original strap button at the back, original strap button at the front as well. I've already mentioned the binding, the LTD features 3-ply binding on the top, 3-ply at the back, ESP has 2-ply at the back which makes more sense. I get it why LTD went for 3 ply all around because it's cheaper to use the same strip of binding on the entire guitar. The comfort cutaway is the only place where the binding stops. As I said with the ESP, even though it's not a full thickness guitar, the binding continues over the set neck joint as well. Set neck construction, 3 piece mahogany, it has been painted white with a glossy finish so I was not able to see any seams between the 3 pieces of mahogany. The thin U profile feels comfortable and features a small volute near the headstock which is always good for me. Designed by ESP meaning that it's not made by them but outsourced to the Korean factory. The serial number confirms that it's made in Korea, starts with W which stands for World Musical Instruments. 2014 and 07 should be the month July. I've removed one of the LTD locking tuners in hope of uh, seeing some of the mahogany grain of the wood inside but it's painted as well. And here is the LTD tuner, we can have a better look at it and there's a marking on the top side here that says C, I'm assuming it stands for China. Here's a better look of that marking, correct me if I'm wrong in assuming that it was made in China. Now that this video is cleaned up, polished. The fingerboard is soiled, it's time to put some strings on it and I'm gonna put the brand new Papa Head Hardwired Signature Master Course 1150. I've already installed a pack of those on the ESP. I'm gonna put them on the LTD as well and on the Gibson Iron Cross and by the time you see this video I've probably reviewed those strings and I'm gonna link the video above. Another big difference, the LTD weighs 3614 grams or 7.96 pounds considerably lighter than the ESP which weighs 
4027 grams or 8.87 pounds, almost a pound heavier. Time to find out will it sound heavier than the LTD.
Now it's time for the interesting part, the accidental blind tests. And no, they're not accidental because we actually blinded someone. My friends accidentally walked into the store while I was trying to demo the LTD versus the ESP and I used them because it's easier to do and they're better guitarists than me. The first one is a dear friend of mine and I want to introduce him by sharing one of his band's videos and the name of the band is Blood Rush. At this point he's telling me that the guitar feels expensive to him but he has no point of reference meaning that he hasn't tried the other one yet so I'm gonna give it to him. He doesn't know all the differences in the pot switches etc etc. <laughs> Give him the ESP again. <laughs> this one has a richer tone, but the other one is a bit easier f for me to play. <laughs> I tried to trick him by pretending to exchange the guitars but giving him the ESP once again. He must have felt that something was off, but there's no way he could have predicted that. <laughs>
now I decided to give it a go myself to see how hard it is, but I know the differences between the two guitars and I didn't have to touch the pots, the headstock or anything like that. At the first moment I knew I was in trouble, because it is hard to figure out which one you're holding. You have to know the guitar very well. At this point I touched the pots and I figured out that this is the ESP because they're raised. As soon as I got the LTD in my hands directly after the ESP, I knew that I was in trouble because it was really hard to feel the difference. I'm explaining him that at first it's almost impossible to determine which one you're holding. But here's the thing about blind tests, they're only showing you which guitar is a bit more comfortable to you. Especially when you're comparing a great with a perfect guitar, remember, we're not comparing a bad to a good guitar. Look at it this way, if the blind test consisted of uh, me receiving a sweet fellatio from a supermodel and a beardless guy, if I guess wrong, would that make me gay? Most definitely. But you will not judge, okay? Whoever you take home after that, it's up to you. And this is exactly what we're gonna do for our next test. Nah, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Let's give Costa one more try with his eyes open. Is this gonna change anything? You might be surprised. <laughs> customer walks in. I'm sorry man, I couldn't, no, I couldn't have known this was happening. <laughs> don't worry, it's, uh, it's something interesting. This is a, this is a $6,000 guitar, oh. this is a $1,000 guitar, they look the same. Aha, and we so were making, sounds better? We were making a blind test, unfortunately. <laughs> unfortunately, it's in favor of the cheaper one. Of course, usually. Yeah. Yeah. Guys, he prefers the cheaper one, so <laughs> I, yeah, I rest my case. <laughs> okay, that's that's certainly interesting. Maybe it's because I'm used to playing cheap, cheaper shit. Yeah, <laughs> or you don't know anything. <laughs> or that. So what you thinking, man? So this is the LTD. I really hear more brightness. It's more richer when you hit a more complex chord, you can hear more of it. Whereas I think this one is a bit, just slightly bit dull, duller. It's not dull at all, like it's, it's a dark, an amazing, right? amazing instrument. Yeah, darker, definitely darker. But this one is definitely easier to play on. It's a bit heavier, but it's easier to like shred. So yeah, I'd say this is brighter, so you can maybe, it's for my preference. I prefer the, these pickups sound or like the combination with the body and the wood and the pickups mm -hmm. but this is definitely easier to shred on and to Let to me rip. tell you something, the pickups are the same, this is more mid focused, yeah. you hear more bright here Definitely But this means that this one might cut in the mix better than the other one Bright doesn't mean better yeah, than yeah, the mix Yeah, yeah, absolutely right? Both of them are amazing So it's literally a matter of preference and playability, this is more playable this is by itself richer sounding, I think, my opinion. Well, I bought the wrong guitar. <laughs> <laughs> the next poor soul who got drowned into this was George Parmakov. He walked into the shop just after Costa and we tried the same thing. He is an amazing musician and videographer, so check out his YouTube channel. His name is George, like me. Everybody in Bulgaria is named George. Hello comrades, today we are going to review two guitars. One very uh, cheap, one very expensive. Will you notice the difference? Well, you heard it from him, guys. So <laughs> I'm going to give him if one of the guitars. If you notice the difference, I buy you vodka. Here you go, George, there's a guitar. 
He is an amazing stand-up comedian, as you probably noticed, but unfortunately for him, this time he was sitting down. Tried the ESP first, now it was time for the LTD. This one feels much more comfortable and much richer and kind of more high end to me, but I don't know. <laughs> yeah, Okay. I'm gonna give you back the other one now. Let's try some try some high EM first. I did the same switcheroo with George, giving him the LTD two times in a row, to confuse him even further. Keep in mind that the LTD has a lot of fret buzz because it was set extremely low. This one. This one feels like it has more low end. Which um, one do you prefer? This one or the one before? Um, hmm. So the other one feels more comfortable to me, but I like the tone of this one more. So okay, let's do the opening thing. I told George that both last times he was trying the LTD and he preferred the LTD as well. Costa is laughing in the back because he preferred the LTD as well. I think they both preferred the LTD because the action was set a little bit lower and the guitar had more high frequencies which sound better when you're playing alone outside of a mix. So here's your answer, if you don't care about the ESP custom shop's heritage, go for the LTD. It's a great playing instrument, it is good enough, it's an amazing guitar altogether. Bobby came by the shop as well. He was the owner of the LTD Snakebite and the EC1000 Fishman Fluence Eclipse. We didn't do a completely blind test. I only told him not to look at the headstock of the guitars and gave him both one after the another and he got them right. Let's hear an opinion from somebody who actually plays Metallica guitars. Which one is are you holding? You haven't looked at the logo. Which one is it? I believe it's the ESP, not the LTD. Okay, close your eyes. We are going to exchange Not, com 
not completely blind, but which one do you prefer? The first one. The first the one. The first one sounds a little bit better. Than which this one, one is this? Uh, so the first one I said is this, but this might be the LTD. Yeah, you okay. guessed it. You mm -hmm. guessed it right. Nice. The first person that guessed it right. Another good friend of mine came by the shop, Peter Gramchev. He's not only a great guitar tech, but he's an amazing guitar player. He helped me with some additional setup of both guitars, the LTD and the ESP, then he gave them a try. So far, you were just watching and judging. Now it's your turn, guys. I'm gonna give you two short clips from Peter playing both guitars. Try to figure out which one is which. Let's go. <laughs> Did you get them right? Relax, no pressure, no one's watching you. Give it another go. If you're feeling confident with your guess, write it down in the comment section and then see if you got it right. How many of you got it right? The first guitar that I gave him was the ESP Iron Cross, that was the one that you were hearing in the blind test. The second one is the LTD that he is gonna demonstrate and test right now. <laughs>
I'm gonna directly translate what Gramchev is saying. He's saying that this one, the LTD, sounds muffled. He is telling me that the ESP sounds much more focused and tight than the LTD. He is telling me that the LTD has certain mids that are not supposed to be there and uh, that the ESP sounds much more focused again, like almost that has been clean boosted or overdrived, has more gain. And we are discussing that the ESP has a lot more gain than the LTD and I have noticed this with a lot of other guitars. I've tried it with the Snake Bites, I had it with a couple of Kirk guitars. The ESP Iron Cross has crazy amount of gain compared to other guitars. We are discussing that the pickups are the same, the James Hetfield set, same electronic and bolt guitars and the ESP has considerably more gain than the LTD. But Peter is confirming that the materials in the ESP are totally different than the LTD so that's why the difference. Let's sum it all up guys because it was a lengthy video. What do I think about the ESP versus LTD thing? Well, first of all, if you consider that one is made in the Kisu custom shop in Japan and the other is outsourced to Korea, you no longer have the same guitars. They are not the same. Simple as that. After seeing all the differences, should you buy one? Mm, it's all on you, it depends. If you're a beginner, if you're intermediate, if you're a collector. If you buy the ESP, it's gonna increase in value over time. Is it better than the LTD? Well, of course it is, definitely. But should you buy one? Depends on what are you gonna be using it for. Are you gonna be utilizing it through a small practice amp? Are you gonna be hearing the full potential of it? Are you a good player? Are you gonna be able to tell those differences? The bad news is that the ESP is only gonna get more and more expensive and the availability is gonna decrease. You're not gonna be able to find it in shops and once it's gone from the shops, you're gonna have to buy it second hand, probably from a collector. The good news is most of these guys like me keep their ESP iron crosses in mint condition. Now, since this is not only a comparison video but a review for the 2014 LTD iron cross, let's talk about it a little bit. I'm gonna straight up say it, in my opinion, my personal taste, the LTD iron cross is the best LTD eclipse that you can buy today. I know it ain't cheap brand new but if you manage to find a good second hand one, like both my iron crosses was, were second hand and they were absolutely mint. This one has been played for a lot of time now, but when I got it, it was absolutely mint. It is an amazing guitar. If you haven't bought an LTD Iron Cross, go ahead and buy one. You can find one for dirt cheap still, before they increase the prices even further. The LTD fortunately is still available at the dealers, so the prices haven't skyrocketed. Once it's gone from the shop, it's gonna get extremely expensive. So get one right now, if you have been looking for one, do it! Now it's the time to do it. I'm extremely happy that I had the chance to test those guitars side by side. Thanks to Martin for giving me the LTD for the test. Thanks to Costa. Thanks to Bobby. Thanks to George. Thanks to Petar Gramchev. You're amazing guys. I hope you like this video. Give it a thumbs up and subscribe.